Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I just got out of the shower, but let's do part two of my houseplant tour. Before we get started, please consider liking and subscribing. So I'm sorry to have cut you off and left you hanging for a couple days, but let's continue talking. I believe I was talking about my elbow. It was starting to rot, and so now it is kind of in a weird setup. So let's get back to that. Back to my elbow. So this had pretty severe rot of that stem right there. I don't know if you can even see it, but the end of this stem here was super, super rotted and I was really worried that I was gonna lose it. So I wrapped it up in just sphagnum moss and saran wrap and that's where it's living right now. I probably will pot that up soon. We shall see. Oh, and then behind the burl marks, this is my Pilea peppermoides. I think it needs more water. It's been struggling. It doesn't do well during the winters, but I've had it for two years now, I think, but it always struggles in the winters, but it'll come back. And another struggle this is a Calathea macroiana. I kind of just gave up on this guy, if I'm being honest. I didn't feel like giving it filtered water, which it sometimes needs, and I went out of town for a while and some of these leaves died. That's why that looks like that. Probably get rid of that guy. And then here is my Hoya carnosa compacta. This is two plants put together, and if you see from the side, it actually looks pretty good. So this guy scared me because he had spider mites. Getting any pests on this plant is kind of a nightmare because the leaves are so like twisty and stuff like that. So so I took it out of the pot. I actually soaked the foliage in soapy water overnight and then power washed it off in the sink. And yeah, I haven't seen any pests since then. So that seemed to work pretty well for me. Then onto this shelf, I'll clear these front plants out so we can look at the back ones first. How's that transition? I hope it was okay. <laughs> so here on the left, this is my philodendron Florida ghost. I am so happy to have this plant. This is a super fast growing, really happy, beautiful. So you can see it was very much tilted towards the window. This, all of the foliage comes in light like lighter than this color and then fade slowly with these little lines until all of the lines fill in and the plant turns to dark green. It has another leaf coming in there. I just really like this plant. There's a Hoya obovada. This guy, I can't seem to keep happy. Uh, it has grown these two new leaves since I've had it. This is a cutting from a friend of mine's plant. I feel like I've underwatered it a few too many times and that's why it's kind of pale and sad like that. But the newer growth looks okay. Those are just the natural speckles that it gets. But I try to keep this one as happy as possible because I think it's really cute. So I'll put that guy back. And then next to that one, this guy's getting a little wet from the humidifier. This is my Raphidophora tetrasperma, but non-tissue cultured edition. Um, so I was really happy to get this plant because as I've talked about so many times, I love my tissue culture Hoya. Nope. My tissue culture Raphidophora tetrasperma and really wanted to get one of the OG ones before they were cloned and so I'm happy to have this one. It hasn't started growing new growth since I've had it because it went through shipping and then being potted up and then all that kind of stuff so don't expect it to put out any new growth anytime soon but for right now it's just chilling being awesome. Next to that guy this is my watch chain plant. This guy has surprisingly done really well and has grown a lot. I don't know why I'm surprised. I think it's because it's not really a very common plant that I see all around. It's not rare or anything, but it's just like not a lot of people have it. I really think it's a great plant and more people should have it. It's really pretty and wiggly. And then next to that, this is my humidifier. That's dirty. And this is a dirty towel because my humidifier was leaking. This is very honest. Ha ha ha. Okay, so I put these front plants back. This guy is kind of in the struggle bus, but this is a variegated alocasia adora, I think it's called. I don't know if the name's on the screen. I traded for this guy. It's a beautiful variegated alocasia that has a new growth point. That's going to be a new leaf right there. So this was actually originally like one long stump with two growth points on it. And then this stump randomly got completely hollow and like died. So there were a bunch of new leaves coming out of here, but now there are not anymore. I'm trying to keep this guy happy happy. That one's struggling, but next to that, this is my beautiful variegated burl marks. This is just a little tiny guy, but that variegation, look at that. And these leaves and those leaves, it really is doing really beautifully. It, oh my god, how long can I spend just looking at these leaves? Like, what in nature? That's just some dirt on there. It's not a pest. Don't worry. But this guy, I honestly just haven't potted him up. I don't know why it's a guy. <laughs> I haven't potted this one up since I got it. I just stuck it in sphagnum moss when I got it because it was a cutting. You can see... 
Yeah, there's like roots growing in here. It's honestly doing really happy, doing really happy. It's honestly doing really great. And I think I'm probably gonna keep it in this jar of sphagnum moss just until spring or until it starts to show that it's not doing well, but it's doing incredibly. So then next to that, this is, what is this? Roof, rue, rough. Rhubarbra. Apparently this is a Calathea rough rhubarbra, apparently, but this is one of those fuzzy ones. I don't know if you can... Oh yeah, look at that. It was thirsty and I watered it earlier. That's why it's a little bit limp like this and I haven't been giving it filtered water, which is why I think those are crisping a little bit, but I am going to vow to do better at taking care of this guy. So we will see if I stick to that vow. So now down to this next shelf, or actually let's go here. This is Thirsty. That's an ongoing trend. This is another Scindapsis pictus exotica. This one was my first one that I ever had, and some of these leaves are actually burnt. I don't know if you can see that. It's like squishy. And then this one too. That's because this light gets like insanely hot whenever it's turned on. And so sometimes if it's like this and it's on, it burns the plant. So I try to keep that away from it. Yeah, this is my skin OG Scindapsis pictus exotica, and it's great growing all the way up to there. And I'm kind of just letting it do whatever it wants. And it's in this macrame hanger that I made. So yeah. And then down here, let me clear these front plants and move this towel out of the way. One second. I don't think these transitions are getting any better. Anyway, this is, there's some lotion and some dirt. Okay, this is my mother of thousands that I don't know if you saw in the previous shot, but it goes all the way to like there. But yeah, this one is the kind of plant that puts out little babies on the ends, and I think I might have to chop this one back because, as you can tell, it's getting a little bit ridiculously tall. And here are all of its little babies. So it, even if I chop this thing back, I will still have a full pot of these, which is pretty cool. I feel like this doesn't really match the aesthetic of all of my other plants because it's like a succulent and my plants tend to be like leafy foliage, but I think that this is just such like a fun activity sort of plant. Like it's it does a lot of things and you can like take the babies off of it and propagate it and give it to friends. So I just think that's really fun. Here is another philodendron pink princess. This guy is a little underwatered recently and is about to drop that leaf, but it's fine because it has all of these other leaves. That is its most recent one, which with some good variegation there. And that one and that one. This one's cool because it actually has multiple growth points. Ooh. Come on, camera. It has multiple growth points. So if you can see, it's this main stalk here, but then there's some other ones here, and this is actually a solid pink leaf there. A lot of potential with this guy, and a few sad-looking leaves. Yeah, love this one. And then next to that, this is my Philodendron Golden Dragon. This is the mottled, mottled, mottled version, where it's, like, variegated, but, like, flecky like that, if you can tell. This is the one that had scale. If you've seen my houseplant pest video, this is the one that I talked about. So some of these little spots are just damaged from where I had to scrape off some of the leaf parts to get rid of the scale. But I did, and look at that leaf. That's its newest one. It's such a weird looking plant, and it's obviously called a golden dragon because it looks like dragon heads. Why don't I just turn it instead of trying to bend the leaves? There we go. Yeah, and this guy has a new leaf coming in. I need to put it in a pretty pot. This is just like a random pot from another plant. It's healthy now and it deserves to be in a pretty, pretty pot. Woohoo! And then next to that, this is kind of a weird situation. This is two Hoyer Curtisii. The bottom pot is a pot full of cuttings that I got from an online seller. And then the top pot is a little pot that I got at the... Wow, that is dirty back there. Sorry about that. That's just all mother of thousands plants. Can you see that? Uh, but this secondary pot right here, this is a plant that I got from the Union Square Farmer's Market, and I just haven't had time to pot them up together. So I just stick this one on top of there and they live fine. But if you can see, it's like getting dark purple there. It's because it's getting sun stressed. I just love the patterning on these leaves. It's just insane. I think I have a lot more Hoya than I think I do. But just look, it's so pretty. Yeah, put that guy back. And then here is another Union Square Farmer's Market find. This is a Perfidifor de Cursiva. This is, I feel like, kind of a sought after plant and like sort of expensive and like hard to find and all that, blah, blah, blah. But I got one at the Farmer's Market. I think this was 
$15, maybe $20 at the farmer's market, which is just absurd. But this is related to obviously the Rifidophore tetraspermas that I have. So I love those so much. So I'm very excited for when this guy starts to grow really well. This is its most recent leaf and the first one that it put out under my care. And yeah, just excited to be able to honestly take cuttings of this and share it with friends. But for now, that is what it looks like. Woohoo! Okay, and then I put these front plants back. This is honestly maybe one of my favorite rows right here, this chunk. Here is another philodendron pink princess and this is my favorite I think because it has just one solid pink leaf and yeah it's having some DNA degradation that's what it's called when they get all like splotchy and weird shaped like this but that's just because the DNA is kind of strange to variegate anyway but then because it's a tissue cultured version it starts to degrade like this so I'm hoping that with enough light and fertilizer and love and attention that it will get back to normal but this leaf is already looking better that's that one here is my beautiful baby this is my monstera tie constellation who this leaf is really funny that's like a raised lip i don't know if you can see that but the coloring is just oh this guy's scrumptious but yeah i got this one from an online plant seller on facebook and yeah, it's put out, I think, these two new leaves for me since I've had it. This was one of the original leaves and the oldest one, which is why it looks like maybe not the best. Yeah, it looks fine. And then it dropped the other two leaves. But I think you heard it here first, folks, that this leaf is pregnant. Can you see? That's like so subtle, but there's like a bump. I don't know. I don't want to call it too soon, but I think we might get a new leaf here sometime soon. But yeah, that's beautiful. The next to that, this is my Philodendron Painted Lady. This was an import and it's honestly not looking that painted. I'm not sure why, but let me see if there's other ones. Yeah, it's sort of just looking like, oh, that one's pretty painted. It's sort of just looking like a green philodendron with yellow stems. I don't mind it because it's cute. And it's like putting out a random new stock of growth there, even though it has this one that it's already working on. It's a weirdo, but I love it. And then next to that, this is my only philodendron billy tie. This is a cutting that I got from Plant Me Ashley. So shout out to you, girl. This leaf is probably going to be lost, but then it's just sitting here in water with this chunk there. And then if you can see, there's a new root. Even though it doesn't look too hot, This she sold this to me as a rehab too I should say that so it doesn't look too hot but it will eventually put out new growth I have I have faith in that and then next to that this is another philodendron micans this is my OG first one start of my collection of philodendron micans this is also in one of these macrame hangers and I recently took cuttings of this for another video but yeah this guy if you can tell this guy was over the lamp where the exotica was and got burned but I didn't want it to get burned so I moved it this is all new growth that was just crazy. He's going crazy. Anyway, next shelf. I'm going to move this light so we can see. Okay, I am now holding this light because it's a little too dark down here without the light. Over here, this is a jade satin little pot of Scandapsis. Here is a silver splash cutting just right there. And then these are my string of hearts propagations. So there's one under here that might be getting a little bit too, too much humidity because it's closed, but I have no other space as you can tell. But yeah, this is just some beautiful string of hearts that I use the butterfly, butterfly, the butterfly technique to chop up. And this is kind of just necessary because whenever my string of hearts get too long, I just chop them back and I don't want to throw out the cutting. So I just put them here. And then this is a beautiful, oh, look at her. This is a variegated string of hearts cutting batch. So this started as like a three or four leaf cutting and it sits right under this grow light. As you can tell, that is why it is beautifully pink like that. I'm really excited for all of this moss to be filled up so that I can have like a big full pot of variegated string of hearts. Speaking of variegated, this is a variegated string of pearls that I just have sitting here because usually I have it sitting in the windowsill there. Oh, those are also some windowsill plants. They're rough. I'm not going to show you. <laughs> Ah, uh, but this is my, actually, I should probably show you those. I'll show you those in a bit. This is my very good string of pearls. It's doing really well and it's thriving. And it usually sits in a windowsill, but now I feel like it's too cold for it. So I moved it so that it's under a grow light. And then next to that, this is actually a very good, nope, not very good. This is a string of turtles propagation experiment. I did the same butterfly technique with string of turtles that I did with string of hearts and it works. So if anybody's ever wondering how to do that, that's how I did that. And then these are some wet sticks <laughs> of Rufidophore tetraspermum that are just like empty parts of the stem that didn't have any leaves on them and then I just put them in here and now they're growing new plants. Here are my philodendron brantianum cuttings and this is just a bunch of scandapsis nearly dark. Nope. 
Skinapsis, uh, what is it called? Skinapsis Jade Satin. So those are some wet sticks of that. And here are just a bunch of single leaf cuttings. I just want to have big pots of all of these. And I'm going to share these with my friends and I use these for trades. And yeah, woohoo. I'm going to bring you just right here and show you these windowsill plants. Ah, this right here is a variegated jade succulent. And that's regular jade succulent. That was some propagations that I made that are now making little babies. And then next to that, ah, this is just a cutting of ficus triangularis variegata that I'm trying to make do things and it kind of is dying, so I'm kind of just leaving it there. And then behind this, back here, those are just some succulents. Yeah. Okay, I wanna warn you, this next section is a little rough. This is like the rehab area. Ooh. So let me take this light down one sec. Okay, so here are some Refritophore tetrasperma cuttings from my propagation experiment. This one is dying because I forgot to water it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, those were some golden pothoses that were cuttings that potted up that need to be watered and sometimes lose leaves randomly. This is a Dracaena Janet Craig that I want to give away, but nobody wants it. And then this is a Peperomia. This was actually remnants of my first plant. Fun fact, uh, this is a Peperomia ferrare cutting and it's kind of just staying here because I'm nostalgic. Here are some Monstera siltipicana cuttings that I'm realizing need more water. They are from this plant here and I'm hoping to pot these up together at some point. Back here, that's my liquid order. Back here, this is a begonia of some sort. I think it's like a mirror begonia or like a glass begonia. I bought it from a friend and it's sort of struggling because I struggle with begonias, but I'm going to try to be better about it. Then struggle bus continues. This is, this one's doing fine. This is a golden, 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 global green, global green pothos right there. And then this is just a regular golden pothos or Hawaiian pothos, I guess, because it has a lot of variegation. This one's struggling for some reason and this one's not. And I should change the water because it's muddy. This is a variegated Hoya carnosa compacta. I don't know why. I am so good at taking care of the regular form, but this one, the variegated form for some reason is just shriveling up and dying no matter what I do. And I have taken it out. I have checked the roots for rot. I have checked for pests. I have checked for everything. I have stopped watering it. I have started watering it and nothing makes it happy. So that's why it's on the shelf. And then finally, this is a philodendron adipopoense that got lost in the mail for 12 days. It has some roots, but I'm hoping it'll survive because I really want to have that plant because it's really pretty. I've always wanted an adipopoense and a billy tie, and both of those are struggling like a lot right now. So this is some um, realness, but that's why it's on the bottom shelf, hidden away. These are some plants that I like found throughout my room when I was cleaning up to shoot this video. So this isn't, they don't usually sit here like this, but they are right now. This is a string of turtles that is mostly dead. Rip. But then, wow, wow, wow. Two more Scandapsis pictus exotica. This one is beautiful and has massive leaves and is just really pretty. And then this one was from a big box store and I had never seen them at big box stores before. So I obviously had to get them. Let's see, is this a problem? One, two three, four of the same plant. I think it's fine. Everything's fine. Oh, and this is, this is a trash can with a leaf on it. This is where I put like scraps of plants. This is my like plant care area. We got some pest control stuff, some like sticky traps, some extra pots, some dirt. And this is my planting mat. This is usually more organized. I'm going to be honest. It's not. Oops. Okay, now let's go to this corner thing. I'm gonna turn off this purple because it's a little distorty. There we go. Okay, so starting up here, this is a Tenanthi Boral Marxii, I think is what it's called. It's kind of doing the same thing that the Calatheas are doing because I need to give it filtered water and I just haven't been, but it's doing really well. It doesn't need that much light and I say it's doing well and it has a bunch of dead leaves. That's normal if it gets underwatered like once. Yeah, it's doing beautifully. I love the colors on that guy. Next down, this is some of the Peperomia piccolobanda cuttings from the other plant over there. That is a little Haworthia in a little copper pot that my grandpa gave me. And then that is a little string of pearls cutting from my original string of pearls that I lost. Then here, this is some more Refitophore tetrasperma cuttings. Wow. And this is a very unfortunate dragon jade Dishidia, Dishidia, that is almost dead. And it has looked this way since the week it arrived. 
after shipping. So I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. I think it was just tossed around in shipping and was not happy about it. And then here's another one of that same plant. This one is doing fine. And then this is a little tiny baby Prince of Orange baby plant pot, like a two inch pot. And this is the present that my brother gave me for Christmas this year. And it's a little 3D printed Pokemon pot. And I thought it just looked so perfect with that plant in it. Then under here, this is my fungus gnat. This is my nerve plant. This is the green version. I just love this guy very much. I wish that I had another place to put it that like wasn't in direct light but like also wasn't on a shelf because I really like seeing this one from above because from like this angle I don't know. You know what I mean? But it's beautiful nonetheless. Look at that. Wow. Then over here. These are sort of struggling. This is a alocasia dragon scale that I think I'm pretty sure has root rot because it used to be a bunch of leaves and now it's just one. So I really need to go in there and check to see if it has root rot. And if it doesn't, maybe it just needs more humidity or maybe it's just going dormant. I don't know, but it's just that one little leaf right now. And then this one is also struggling. This poor guy, this is an alocasia, what are you? Alocasia maharani. This guy is just beautiful textured and is struggling a little bit too. So I don't know. I think it's a theme that I'm struggling with my alocasia and I hope not to. Since this is the newest leaf, I might need to cut this here so that I still have potential of getting another one after that. I don't know. I'm figuring them out. <laughs> and this is another variegated string of hearts that I just couldn't pass up because it's cute. So it's just living right here. It's kind of out of place. And then this is my alocasia black velvet, which as opposed to those other two, this one is doing really well. So this is just a beautiful variety where the leaves come in like this dark green and then fade to this almost black color. They do sometimes get a little dusty. Like you can see this dust on here. It's not spider mites or anything. It's just kind of like lint. But yeah, it has this leaf that's brand new. Then this leaf that was before that. So I love this guy. So this is proof. I can take care of alocasia. Just not those ones. <laughs> And then this one, this is a beautiful Ruilia macoyana. So this I got from Logi's Nursery when I went in the winter last year, a year ago, I think. And this is called, I think, the like trailing monkey vine. No, trailing velvet monkey something. But I got it because I thought it was related to a zebra plant. But it's not. And this guy, though it struggles, it is just as dramatic as a zebra plant. I should say that it will like completely wilt and be really sad if it misses a single watering. But I noticed yesterday, what the heck is flowering? So cute. So I moved this guy. This one was originally here and I decided to move it here because I want to be able to see it more easily. And now I can. Woohoo. Okay. This is art from my friend Clark. And then up here, this is one of my first plants. This is a Peperomia obtusifolia variegata that is kind of just going crazy and I'm just letting it live its life. This is a variegated neon pothos, which is very cool. It is getting a little bit darker in its foliage because it's sort of in a lower light area, but it is still doing beautifully and I like it a lot. This is a staghorn fern that I purchased like four months ago with the intention of making a video mounting it onto a board and I have not gotten around to it, but this guy is really pretty. I have never had a staghorn before this, but I'm trying it out and I really like it. This is another weird out of place thing. This is a philodendron Brazil small weird tiny cutting. I took cuttings of this for my propagation box video. That's why it's kind of just weird and it's just sitting there for right now. Then I love this plant so much. This was my late grandmother's plant. This is a Peperomia scandens. That was like a two or three leaf cutting when I first got it and now it trails all the way down to there. I'm kind of worried honestly that it's gonna like fall over because this foliage is pretty substantial. Love you, Oma. Then up there, this is a Peperomia Wolfgang cranii that flowered and kind of ruined the whole plant. So the top parts was it trying to flower and it was much more compact before and I kind of just lost love for it, which is why it's like on a thing at the top of my room all the way up there. I'm not a bad person. Everybody falls out of love with some plants sometimes. This is a plant that I still love very much. This is my Maranta plant. This is Miranda the Maranta that I've talked about so many times, I feel like, on my Instagram and on my YouTube channel. But I got this as a little broken off stick on the floor of Home Depot last year, and it is now this massive, beautiful plant. It's kind of weird because it's all, that's the pot that it's in. And then it's like trailing to the side like that. I like it very much. Here's another Maranta. This is a Maranta Luconura. Yeah, this is the lemon lime Maranta. And it's just a cutting, but it has put out these new leaves. And I hope to pop this up soon. And then repropagate so that I can have a full pot of that. 
And then this is a philodendron heteraceum. This is just a green heartleaf philodendron, but I love it how it's hanging in this hanging pot. It's in a nursery pot inside. Let me show you. Yeah, it's in a small nursery pot inside this hanging pot because these pots don't have drainage. So that's why it's doing that. And then under that, very similarly, this is a, another philodendron heteraceum, but this is the lemon lime edition which just has really cute foliage. Same as the Neon Pothos, this is kind of turning dark because it doesn't have as much light as it probably wants, but the new growth is still coming in just as bright as it should be, so. Yeah, that's all that stuff. Why is my camera? There we go. And then here are just some hanging pots. This is my beautiful string of turtles. I love this guy so much. A bunch of flowers just fell off of it, but it's super long and trailing now. And then this is another string of turtles that is struggling. Oops. <laughs> and then these are some Scandaptus pictus cuttings and then more Raphidophore tetrasperma cuttings. And then over there is just a random bunch of random cuttings propagating. But yeah, I think, wow, was that everything? I really did that thing. I really went through every single plant. Ugh. So I have a lot of plants. I don't know how many that was. I'll probably do a counter to see how many I have. But yeah, I really, since I started my collection, I have kind of shifted my interests, obviously, to more like hard to find or rare or like just fun and interesting plants. So I hope you had a fun time coming around this tour with me. I'm gonna go get started on editing this because I can already tell it's gonna take a long time. But yeah, oh, there's me. Hi, I'm wearing pajamas. But yeah, this is my room.